to fade on a relative basis, but even more concerning is the education that the balance of people are getting. Uh, not only has that been weak, it's getting weaker. And if you look at the economy, it really is only providing opportunities now to people with a better education. And so we have to change this. We have to change it so that people have equal opportunity. We have to change it so that the country is strong and, and, and stays in the forefront of things that are, are driven by advanced education like science and mathematics. When I first learned the statistics, I was pretty stunned at how bad things are. Over 30% of kids never finish high school. And that had been covered up for a long time because they always took the dropout rate as the number who started in senior year and, and then compared it to the number of the finished senior year because they weren't tracking where the kids were before that. But most of the dropouts had taken place before that. And so they had to raise the stated dropout rate as soon as that tracking was done to over 30%. For minority kids, it's over 50%. And even if you graduate from high school, if you're low income, you have less than a 25% chance of ever completing a college degree. If you're low income in the United States, you have a higher chance of going to jail than you do of getting a four-year degree. And that you know, doesn't seem entirely fair. So how do you make education better? Now, our foundation for the last nine years has invested in this. There's many people working on it. Uh, we've worked on small schools, uh, we've funded scholarships, we've done things in libraries. Uh, a lot of these things had a good effect, but the more we looked at it, the more we realized that having great teachers was the very key thing. And so we hooked up with some people studying how much variation is there between teachers, between, say, the top quartile, the very best, and the bottom quartile. How much variation is there within a school or between schools? And the answer is that these variations are absolutely unbelievable. Uh, a top quartile teacher will increase the performance of their class based on test scores by over 10% in a single year. What does that mean? Well, that means that the entire US for two years had top quartile teachers, the entire difference between us and Asia would go away. And within four years, we would be blowing everyone in the world away. So it's simple. All you need is those top quartile teachers. And so you'd say, well, wow, that's good. We should reward those people. We should retain those people. We should find out what they're doing and transfer that skill to other people. But I can tell you that absolutely is not happening today. What are the characteristics of this top quartile? What, what do they, they look like? You might think, well, these must be very senior teachers. And the answer is no. Once somebody is taught for three years, their teaching quality does not change thereafter. The variation is very, very small. You might think, well, these are people with master's degrees. They've gone back and they've gotten their master's of education. This chart takes four different factors and says, how much do they explain teaching quality? That bottom thing, which says there's no effect at all, is a master's degree. Uh, now, the way the pay system works is there's two things that are rewarded. One is seniority, because uh, your pay goes up and you vest into your pension. And the second is giving extra money to people who get their master's degree. But it in no way is associated with being a better teacher. Teach for America, slight effect. Uh, for math teachers, majoring in math is a, a measurable effect, but overwhelmingly, it's your past performance. There are some people who are very good at this, and we've done almost nothing to study what that is and to draw it in, uh, to, to replicate it, to raise the average capability, or to encourage the people with it to stay in the system. You might say, well, do the good teachers stay and the bad teachers leave? The answer is, on average, the slightly better teachers leave the system, and it's a system with very high turnover. Now, there are a few places, very few, where great teachers are being made. A uh, good example of one is a set of charter schools called KIPP. KIPP means knowledge is power. It's an unbelievable thing. 
They have 66 schools, mostly middle schools, seven high schools, and uh, what goes on is great teaching. They take the poorest kids, and over 96% of their high school graduates go to four-year colleges. And the whole spirit and attitude in those schools is very different than in the normal public school. They're team teaching. They're constantly improving their teachers. They're taking data, the test scores, and saying to a teacher, hey, you caused this amount of increase. And so they're deeply engaged in making teaching better. When you actually go and, and sit in one of these classrooms, at first it's very bizarre. I sat down and I thought, what is going on? The teacher was running around and the energy level was high. I thought, well, I'm in the, prep, the, the sports rally or something. What's going on? And the teacher was constantly scanning to see which kids weren't paying attention, which kids were bored, and calling on kids rapidly, putting things up on the board. It was a very dynamic environment because particularly in those middle school years, fifth through eighth grade, keeping people engaged and setting the tone that everybody in the classroom needs to pay attention. Nobody gets to make fun of it or have the position of you know, the kid who, who doesn't want to be there. Everybody needs to be involved. And so KIPP is doing it. How does that compare to a normal school? Well, in a normal school, teachers aren't told how good they are. The data isn't gathered. In the teacher's contract, it will limit the number of times the principal can come into the classroom, sometimes to once per year. And they, they need advance notice to do that. So imagine running a factory where you've got these workers, some of them just making crap, and the management is told, hey, you can only come down here once a year, but you need to let us know because we might actually do, fool you and try and do a good job in that one brief moment. Even a teacher who wants to improve doesn't have the tools to do it. They don't have the test scores. And there's a whole thing of, of trying to block the data. For example, New York passed a law that said that the teacher improvement data could not be made available and used in the tenure decision for the teachers. And so that's sort of working in the, the opposite direction. But I'm optimistic about this. I think there's some clear things uh, we can do. First of all, there's a lot more testing going on, and that's given us the picture of where we are. And that allows us to understand who's doing it well and call them out and find out what those techniques are. Of course, digital video is cheap now. Putting a few cameras in the classroom and saying that things are, are being recorded on an ongoing basis uh, is very practical in all public schools. And so every few weeks, teachers could sit down and say, OK, here's a little clip of something I thought I did well. Here's a little clip of something I think I did poorly. Advise me when this kid acted up. How should I have dealt with that? And they can all sit and work together on those problems. You can take the very best teachers and kind of annotate it, have it so everyone sees who is the very best teaching this stuff. You can take those great courses and make them available so that a kid could go out and watch the physics uh, course, learn from that. If you have a kid who's behind, you would know you could assign them that video to watch and review the concept. And in fact, these free courses could not only be available just on the internet, but you could make it so that DVDs were always uh, available and so anybody who has access to a DVD player can have the very best teachers. And so by thinking of this as a, a personnel system, we can do it much better. Uh, there's a book actually about KIPP, the, the place that this is going on, that Jay Matthews, a Newsweek reporter, wrote called Work Hard, Be Nice. And I thought it was so fantastic, gave you a sense of what a good teacher does. I'm gonna send everyone here a free copy of this book. Uh, Now we put a lot of money into education and I really think that education is the most important thing to get right uh, for the country to have as strong a future as it should have. In fact, we have in the stimulus bill, it's interesting, the House version actually had money in it for these data systems and uh, was taken out in the Senate because there are people who are threatened by these things, but I, I'm optimistic. I think uh, people are beginning to recognize uh, how important this is and it really can make a difference uh, for millions of lives if we get it right. Well, I only had time uh, to frame those two problems. 
There's a lot more problems like that. Uh, AIDS, pneumonia. I can just see you're getting excited uh, just at the, the very name of these things. And the skill sets required to tackle these things are very broad. You know, the system doesn't naturally make it happen. Governments don't.